Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to look at backups, multi-AZ and read replicas with RDS. So this is gonna be a theoretical lecture and the next lecture we're gonna go into a lab and we're gonna look at how we can set up multi-AZ read replicas and backups. So let's start with backups and there's two different types of backups for RDS. We have our automated backups and then we have our database snapshots. And our automated backups allow you to recover your database to any point in time within a retention period and the retention period can be between 1 and 35 days. Now automated backups will take a full daily snapshot and will also store transaction logs throughout the day and when you do a recovery AWS will first choose the most recent daily backup and then apply the transaction logs relevant to that day and so what this allows you to do is a point in time recovery down to a second within the retention period. So automated backups are enabled by default and the backup data is stored in S3 and you get free storage space equal to the size of your database. So if you have an RDS instance of 10 gigs, you're gonna get 10 gigs worth of storage. And backups are taken within a defined window. So during the backup window, storage IO may be suspended while your data is being backed up and you may experience a little bit of elevated latency. Database snapshots are done manually. So think of someone taking a photo on a beach using a Polaroid camera, for example. So they're user initiated. And they are stored even after you delete the original RDS instance, unlike automated backups. And when you go in to delete your RDS instance, often it will ask you if you want to take a final snapshot of that instance before you delete it. In terms of restoring your backups, whenever you restore either an automatic backup or a manual snapshot, the restored version of the database is going to be a new RDS instance with a new DNS endpoint. So bear that in mind as well. As soon as you do a restore, it's not going to restore to the same RDS instance it's going to actually restore to a brand new RDS instance and that's going to have a different endpoint moving on to encryption so encryption at rest is supported for MySQL Oracle SQL Server PostgreSQL MariaDB and Aurora and encryption is done using the AWS KMS service and once your RDS instance is encrypted the data stored at rest in the underlying storage is encrypted as are automated backups read replicas and snapshots so as soon as you've turned encryption on Basically, anything that you're doing, such as backups, read replicas, uh, and snapshots, are also going to be encrypted as well. So moving on to multi-AZ, and we covered this in Databases 101, but just in case you forgot, let's say we've got an elastic load balancer and we've got our EC2 instances behind it. They then connect into our RDS database, and this is in US East 1A. It then synchronously replicates all changes or all updates to that database to US East 1B. So you've got two two copies of your database. Now, if you were to lose US East 1A as an availability zone, what's gonna happen is Amazon are going to update the DNS settings and the RDS endpoint is automatically going to fail over to the RDS instance in US East 1B. So multi-AZ allows you to have an exact copy of your production database in another availability zone and it's done synchronously through synchronous replication. And AWS handles the replication for you. So when your production database is written to, this write will automatically be synchronized to the standby database. And so in the event of a planned database maintenance or DB instance failure or an availability zone failure, Amazon RDS will automatically fail over to the standby so that the database operations can resume quickly without any administrative intervention. So you don't need to go in and change your connection strings or anything like that. You're still using the same DNS endpoint. Amazon's basically just updating the IP address to point from one RDS instance to another. They do all that. You don't have to worry about it and it will fail over automatically to another availability zone. So just remember that multi-AZ is for disaster recovery only. It's not primarily used for providing or improving performance. For performance improvements, you're going to need read replicas. Now multi-AZ is available for the following databases. It's available for SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL Server, PostgreSQL, and MariaDB. Aurora by its own architecture is uh, completely fault tolerant. We're going to have a whole dedicated lecture to Aurora and how that works coming up. So what's a read replica? Here we have our EC2 instances behind an elastic load balancer. They are then connecting in to our production database. Our production database is then asynchronously replicating out to multiple copies. 
copies in this example. Now how this can really improve performance is in this current example, basically all our EC2 instances are reading from the primary database as well as doing writes. But you can actually architect it so that your EC2 instances read from different read replicas and then they only write to a single database. And of course those writes would then be replicated out. And you can even have read replicas of read replicas. So you can have multiple copies of your production database uh, as read replicas and you can have read replicas as read replicas. The cool thing about it as well is you can promote read replicas to be their own standalone database. So you can also do that as well. So read replica allows you to have a read only copy of your production database. And this is achieved using asynchronous replication from the primary RDS instance to the read replica. And you can use read replicas primarily for very read heavy database workloads. And where you're going to see this come up in the exam is it will talk about how you can improve performance for a database. And there's two ways really you can do that is you can go in and add read replicas and you can also go in and start using Elasticache. And we're going to have an Elasticache lecture coming up as well. But that's where you're going to see read replicas come up in your exams. And read replicas are available for the following databases. So we have MySQL, we have PostgreSQL, we have MariaDB, Oracle, and Aurora. And the things to know about read replicas is they're used for scaling, they're not used for DR, and they must have automatic backups turned on in order to deploy a read replica. And we'll see that in the lab coming up. And you can have up to five read replica copies of any database, and you can have read replicas of read replicas. But when you do that, you do have to start watching out for replication latency. Other things to know about read replicas is each read replica will have its own DNS endpoint and you can now have read replicas that also have multi-AZ turned on and you can create read replicas of multi-AZ source databases as well. And read replicas can be promoted to their own databases and this breaks the replication. So if you do promote a read replica to be its own independent database, the replication will no longer work. And you can also have a read replica in a separate second region. So you can um, have a read replica in a completely separate region to where your primary database is. So bear that in mind as well. So as always, the best way to learn about RDS is to go ahead and get our hands dirty. So if you've got the time, please join me in the next lecture. Thank you.